especially the Edo River, and also I could access Tokyo, a big city, and its advantages. And uh, I also spent two years in Sapporo, in Hokkaido, in the northern area of Japan, and I enjoyed skiing a lot in Sapporo. Wow. Okay. So did, did, you, did you become pr a pretty good skier? Are you, do, you, do you still ski? Oh, yes. Sometimes I do. Yeah. Yes. Was it kind of... How, how did you... How does skiing? Um, how does skiing make you feel? Basically, you're out there, kind of, you know, by yourself yes. in nature. And right, exactly. You know, when uh, I enjoy skiing, I feel the big, wide nature. So I see lots of mountains and lots of snow, and I feel, you know, very comfortable and very, you know, uh, serene. Yeah, very comfortable in the big nature. So I like skiing. Okay. Uh, Tell me about some of your other interests growing mm -hmm. up. What else did you like to do? Well, uh, in Sapporo, uh, it has a beautiful night sky. So I like to watch the stars. And it, you know, made me interested in space. And in Matsudo City, uh, it had a planetarium. So I could learn uh, the stars and the constellations for just 30 cents each visit. <laughs> So I went there very often with my older brother, and it widened up my interest in space as well. That sounds like a bargain, 30 cents each visit. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Uh, tell us how you would, you would characterize uh, the value of education in mm -hmm. your life. Education has played a major role uh, in my life. Well, from the beginning of my education, I liked uh, studying, especially math and science. Mm -hmm. And each level uh, I could add to my knowledge, and I think it widened up my career. Okay. Can you um, tell us about your educational background uh, starting from, um, from high school graduation, post high school, mm -hmm. after high school? I see. I majored in aerospace engineering uh, at the University of Tokyo under Professor uh, Toru Tanabe and Dr. Shinji Nakasuka and receiving both bachelor and master's degree there. Uh, I studied especially uh, space transportation systems and space robotics. Also, I had an opportunity to study uh, for one year at the University of Maryland. And there, uh, there was a huge water tank which uh, was 30 feet in depth. So I, we put robots in the water tank mm -hmm. and we could simulate microgravity. So it's a very interesting experience to me. Okay. Do you recall when it was that you first got the notion that you wanted to be an astronaut? Yes. Uh, when I was a child, I liked to watch science fiction movies like Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And I believed we could go to space when we grew up. And uh, at the age of 15, I watched TV and uh, I watched space shuttle launch and realized, oh, uh, there was a real space rocket in the world. Mm -hmm. It was not a science fiction, but it was a real world. So uh, I was thinking about a possibility uh, to be become an astronaut. Uh, Dr. Chiaki Makai was Japan's only female astronaut before you. Yes. What, what was it, uh, considering, I guess, those odds, what gave you the confidence that, that mm -hmm. to pursue a career as an astronaut? Well, uh, when uh, I wanted to become an astronaut, I didn't f think about the fact uh, there were not so many women astronauts. I was focused on being an astronaut, not being a uh, women astronaut. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1996, uh, you began working for Japan's space agency. It, it's called JAXA now, but back then it was called NASDA. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about the jobs that you held um, mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you first started, and from there, uh, walk us through how you eventually mm -hmm. uh, made it to the astronaut corps. Yes. 
In 1996, I started working in NASA, which is now JAXA, as an engineer. And I helped the work on the development of Kibo, the Japanese experiment module, which is now attached onto the International Space Station. So uh, it enhanced my desire to become an astronaut and to go and work on the International Space Station, especially on Kibo. And uh, in 1998, I applied for uh, the Japanese Astronaut Corps. This was my second try. And Japanese Space Agency has a similar uh, selection process like uh, in NASA's. We had uh, comprehensive uh, examinations, medical examinations, and some physical fit check, and several interviews. Mm -hmm. And the whole process took almost one year. So when I was selected, uh, I was so excited and felt very thankful to many people who have supported me. Okay. Uh, continue the story from there then. Uh, tell us uh, what you've done uh, since becoming an astronaut mm -hmm. and, and how you eventually mm -hmm. uh, came here to Johnson Space Center. Mm -hmm. Yes. In 1999, I started my basic training. The basic training was held uh, in many countries, in Japan, in Canada, in the United States, in Russia, and in European countries, because uh, these countries are the major uh, partners in the International Space Station program. And uh, after I finished my basic training, I went to Russia, uh, for seven months in the Star City to get qualified as a flight engineer of the Russian spacecraft Soyuz. Then after that, I came to Houston uh, to join the NASA's Mission Space Race training program. You've done a lot of tra traveling even before your first space flight. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. Um, STS-131 is your first space mm -hmm. flight. Uh, tell us the story of, of where you were, what you were mm -hmm. doing when you, when you found out you'd been selected to, to make this flight. Oh, yes. Uh, I was visiting Japan for training when I received a message from uh, the astronaut office chief at the time, Steve Lindsay. Mm -hmm. So when I read his message, I was so excited mm -hmm. and felt you know, very thankful to my families and to all the people who have supported me. Uh, what are you most looking forward to on this mission? What are you mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing or experiencing the most? Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm looking forward to working with my crew members to fulfill the mission objectives. Uh, and also, I'm also looking forward to watching the Earth from space. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe I will enjoy uh, the microgravity feeling as well. Okay. Uh, this mission will commemorate a milestone for JAXA. Um, mm -hmm. It'll mark the first time that two Japanese astronauts, mm -hmm. yourself and Soichi Noguchi, uh, have been in space mm -hmm. together. Uh, how special will that be for you and for Japan? Yes, uh, this is a very uh, big step to Japan. Of course, for the as, uh, American astronaut, it is usual. However, for the Japanese astronaut, it is the first time to get together in space. And Soichi and I are scheduled to do uh, several tasks together, like uh, experiment rock transfer and installation of the space station. So we are looking forward to working each other. And we are also looking forward to sharing some Japanese cultures among the crew members. Okay. Give us your thoughts, if you would, uh, about uh, the progress that Japan has made uh, in space exploration from its early years to uh, now having a significant presence uh, on the International Space Station. Thank you. Uh, Japan has a, come a long way from a pencil rocket, a very small, tiny rocket, to the H-2 rocket, which recently delivered H-2 transfer vehicle to the International Space Station successfully. Also, Kibo, the Japanese expanding module, is now attached to the space station. 
and in keyboards there are lots of science experiments. 